Thank you very much. And we turn to our next item of business, which is topical questions. Our first question is from Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government by what date the R100 project is expected to deliver its target of 100% super-fast broadband coverage. Mr Paul Wheelhouse. As I outlined in my update to Parliament on Friday, the procurement is ongoing and delivery timescales will be confirmed once you have a supplier or suppliers in place later this year. The £600 million that we have committed to the R100 programme is a vital investment in Scotland's national infrastructure and 96.5% of that investment is coming from the Scottish Government, despite broadband services being wholly the legal and regulatory responsibility of UK ministers. We do this because we want to, to secure the right outcome for Scotland, one that will underpin digital connectivity and economic growth for decades to come, and we will work to deliver that as early as possible. Colin Smith. Th thank the Minister for that answer, but it didn't actually answer the question. The question was very specifically, when is the government expected to deliver its target of 100% superfast broadband? Now, previously, the government were very clear. They said consistently it would be by 2021. Now, the minister now seems to be saying it will be as soon as possible. So can the minister answer the question, will the government meet its commitment to deliver superfast broadband R100 by 2021? Yes or no? Minister. Um, as I said in my original answer, if Mr Smith had been listening, um, that we will confirm this once we have a supplier or suppliers in place. It's part of the actual negotiations with yeah. the bidders. We are setting them our objective of achieving goals by 2021, and we're inviting the bidders, this is how bidding works, to submit their bids yeah. on the basis of how much they will deliver by 2021. So clearly it's impossible to say at this point in time, during the live procurement process, exactly what we will see but I, I certainly want to commit to give Parliament, as soon as we have a preferred bidder in place, and we have, as I say in my answer, um, dealt with that, then we'll be able to come back to Parliament with more certainty about the delivery timescales. Colin Smith. Yeah, thank you, President Officer. I think that was possibly the longest no I, I've actually heard. It, it's quite clear that the government are clearly not going to hit the original target you set. So can I ask specifically, the, the, the Minister's announced that, that the contracts are now being awarded effectively a year later than they were originally being awarded. So does, does the Minister, can he say now that meeting that target and meeting the coverage the government believed they would meet by the end of 2021 or by 2021 is now less likely as a result of these delays in awarding the contract or are you still on target? Minister. Well, we have we've always, uh, presiding officer, acknowledged that 2021 would be a challenging target to meet and, and given the scale and complexity of the procurement, uh, legally, financially and technically, will not sacrifice our aim of achieving the best result for Scotland. I am confident that the process is working well. We've maintained competition throughout the process, which is vital to try and ensure we get good deal for the public uh, taxpayer. Uh, but we are getting uh, good engagement through the process. And I, I would hope to give Mr Smith confidence that uh, the Scottish Government is delivering well on broadband. I mean, I only have to direct him to the Ofcom 2018 Connected Nations report, which confirmed that Scotland continues to outperform the UK as a whole in terms of providing superfast broadband access. And stating, and I quote, because I hear some scoffing from the, from the left, over the past year, and I quote here, over the past year, i.e. 2017 to 2018, the coverage of superfast broadband across the UK increased from 91% to 94%, with Scotland seeing the largest increase of five percentage points from 87 to 92%, unquote. And Ofcom figures show uh, they also show that since the DSSB, the Digital Scotland Superfast Broadband Programme, began in 2014, access to superfast broadband has increased by 31 percentage points in Scotland, uh, compared with just 19 percentage points in the UK. So we are, we are doing well. We want to carry our track record forward in delivering R100. And as I've said, presiding officer, to the member, I'm, I'm confident I'll be able to give members a fuller update once the procurement process proceeds to the preferred bidder stage and an appointment of the contractors. We'll have more information about the delivery timescales. There are five members who wish to get in, so if we can try and be succinct, we might get through all five. Finlay Carson. For 18 months, this government's been crowing about R100 being delivered by 2021. That's since Derek Mackay's 2017 budget announcement, given false hope to constituents right around the country. 600 million has been promised, but in reality, on the ground, investment in broadband infrastructure has fallen from 114 million in 2017-18 to only 32.9 in 2019-20. 
Will you apologise to my constituents and take immediate action to support businesses in my constituency who are struggling for any kind of connectivity? Despite your protestations to the contrary, the SNP government have responsibility for the rollout of areas where commercial providers are unable or unwilling to provide it on a commercial basis. <laughs> well, Mr Carson, uh, predictably, has gone for this line of attack, I have to say. Um, I need to remind Mr Carson, as I have done to several Conservative MPs and MSPs who have written to me on broadband issues, that, and as I said in my answer, that legally and, and regulatory responsibilities are the responsibility of UK ministers. And, and in terms of the delivery... All right, Mr. let the minister answer, please. Mr Carson wants to, to, to direct things to delivery. Let's talk about delivery in Dumfries and Galloway. Uh, when the DSSB programme commenced, in Dumfries and Galloway, 17, just 17 per cent of premises in Dumfries and Galloway could have a super fast broadband connection. Yeah. By February of this year, 2019, 83.3 per cent can now have a super fast connection. So that is the record of delivery. As I read out in my response to, to Mr Smith, Ofcom, well Ofcom, if the member wants to dis disagree with Ofcom, Ofcom have highlighted the Scottish Government's track record is better than that of the UK Government. As I said, 31% increase in Scotland since January 2014, 19% in the UK as a whole. And despite the most challenging geography in these islands, we have overachieved compared to the UK average. Richard Lyles, to be followed by Edward Mountain. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Minister advise how the approach here in Scotland differs from that being taken by the UK Government, because it is reserved? What, how that impacts on R100, what contribution the UK Government is making to R100, and what the UK Government target date for 100% access to superfast broadband is? Minister. Well, it's, a, it's an extremely important point. Um, as Richard Lyle has said, the UK government does not have a commitment for 100% superfast coverage across the UK. Scotland is the only part of the UK to have made such a commitment, one supported by £600 million of public investment targeted towards the areas that most, uh, need it most. Only £21 million, or 3.5% of that £600 million cost, is coming from the UK government, despite responsibility for broadband being wholly reserved to Westminster. The UK government have indicated an objective to have full fibre access across the UK by 2033, but no funding has been committed, no funding, in support of this ambition, and the Scottish Government is not waiting. We have acted. The £600 million that we've committed to the R100 programme will put Scotland in an enviable position as one of the best connected nations in Europe. And that's something I would hope members across this chamber will get behind. Edward Mountain to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Given that NHS Highland is starting to rely on superfast broadband to deliver its Near Me treatment service, do you agree with me that the failure to deliver R100 on time is bad for the health of Highlanders? Minister. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Mountain is, is trying to, to make a point here which I think is extremely unfair. In Highland alone, in, uh, between January 2014 and February 2019, so this is the impact of the Digital Scotland Superfast Broadband Programme, there's been an increase of 58.3% in access to superfast coverage. That, again, is well above the 19% increase we've seen across the UK over the same period. So, if anything, Highlands has been well served by the investment this government is making and the stewardship of the DSSB programme with our partners has delivered an outstanding result. And perhaps the member might want to acknowledge that. I do agree with him that, that access to broadband is extremely important for new innovation areas such as health innovation. And clearly, through SIFTEC uh, and other measures, we're actually pioneering new approaches to the use of digital technology in the high NHS Highland area. And I think that will benefit hugely from the investment in R100 and the continued investment in DSSB. Stuart Stevenson, to be followed by Jamie Halker Johnson. Is the uh, Minister aware of the UK Government's announcement on the universal service provision for broadband, which is for a lower speed than that of the R100 programme? But more fundamentally, it is a capped investment where the subscriber will have to pay any extra money above the cap the UK Government are putting in place. Is such a cap in place for the R100 programme? Minister. 
Uh, well, in answer, short answer to, to Mr Stevenson, no, there is no such cap in R100. We are looking not only to spend the £600 million pounds through the initial R R100 procurement, but we've always acknowledged we may need aligned interventions to supplement that. Uh, I am concerned that the initiatives uh, that are in place as, uh, as a result of the UK Government's uh, decisions around universal service obligation will be insufficient to provide the cost of delivering a connection in many rural properties. And I think the member is absolutely right to highlight that. But we are trying to work with UK ministers to see how we can combine our efforts in respect of voucher schemes, try and get the best bang for the public buck and make sure we do as much as we can to uh, accelerate deployment in those areas affected by, uh, by poor service at this present time. And Jamie Halker Johnson. Uh, thank you very much. Despite the picture being painted by the Minister and other SNP uh, members today that all seems to be rosy, uh, all seems to be rosy in the broadband uh, garden, a witch survey released earlier this year showed that parts of my Highlands and Islands region have amongst the worst broadband speeds in the country, with Orkney having the slowest speeds for any local authority area, Shetland not far behind, and Murray the worst mainland authority. So as, uh, as a time when more and more services are moving online, has the Scottish Government made any analysis of the wider cost of these delays to broadband rollout, particularly in Scotland's remote and rural communities? Minister. I, I would just state to Mr Halker Johnson, presiding officer, that I've, I've highlighted in my, a number of times now, the rollout in Scotland has been faster than the UK average. Starting from a lower base, we've caught up only two points behind. And in regards to, I know that a member takes a particular interest in Orkney Islands, for example, in the absence of DSSB, there'd be 11.1% of premises in Orkney Islands would have had access to superfast broadband. Currently, it's 65.1%. And we are looking to move the R100 programme. The R1 programme, uh, well, if the member would listen, the R100 programme, we have set a commitment, mandated areas across all of them in the Highlands and Islands that have to be delivered by the selected bidders. And also, we set uh, weighted areas, in particular in our island communities, to make sure that we do address the deficiencies in broadband uh, coverage. But I would just remind him and other members, this is actually a responsibility, regulatory terms and legally, of the UK government. We are merely, we are merely taking the funding that has been allocated augmenting it with our resources and doing better than the UK Government in rolling out the schemes. Apologies to Rhoda Grant. Uh, there's no more time for any questions. There's a lot of interest in that subject, I can tell. But question number two, Alistair Allen. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to protect Scotland's fisheries interests around Rockall. Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop. Our relationship with Ireland is strong and we value it highly. Our aim is to reach an amicable position with the Irish Government. Uh, before I set out the latest steps, it may be helpful to Parliament if I provide some background. In 2017, the Scottish Government became aware of a significant increase in fishing by Irish vessels in the territorial seas and fishing grounds within 12 nautical miles of Rockall. Irish and other EU vessels can, of course, fish in the external 200 nautical miles of the exclusive economic zone with quota. In April 2017, the then Irish Foreign Minister asked to speak with me about his concerns regarding potential enforcement by Marine Scotland. Since 2017, we have had regular ministerial meetings and calls where this issue has been discussed alongside official level meetings. We have made various political and diplomatic efforts to resolve the issue without the need for enforcement action. In September 2018, uh, given no resolution had been reached, we notified the Irish government that in the absence of an agreed way forward, uh, we would need to prepare enforcement options uh, in line with international law and that we would give them notice of such action. Dialogue is continuing between the Irish and Scottish governments. Uh, there have been close contacts at official level over recent days, and it has now been agreed that a process of intensified engagement will take place, led by senior officials from both administrations. We want to reach an agreement with governments, uh, and our governments are talking as we speak in an effort to do so. While that discussion takes place, Marine Scotland will continue to monitor the area using aerial and satellite capabilities. You asked her, Alan. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her reply. The Scottish Government clearly does, as she has said, have the legal right to regulate fishing rights and access up to 12 nautical miles from Rockall, uh, and that is laid out in the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. She will be aware of the importance of the fishing industry to my own constituency and to many other communities across Scotland. So is the Cabinet Secretary able to outline to Parliament what increase in activity around Rockall there has been in recent years and what impact has 
the notice of enforcement had on any such activity. Cabinet Secretary. I agree entirely that sustainable fishing and responsible fisheries management depend to a large degree on adherence and enforcement of the law. In recent years, activity by Irish vessels in the area had increased sharply uh, from 15 incursions in 2015 to 33 in 2016 and 94 in 2017. In 2018, there was a slight decrease in activity due to a change in fishing quotas and the absence of some seasonal fisheries. Surveillance by Marine Scotland has shown a decrease in Irish vessels' activity in the area as a result of the notice of enforcement action. Official and ministerial channels have always remained open through this period, and I welcome the move to intensify discussions in the coming days. Alistair Allen. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that information. As uh, she has outlined, uh, Rockall is recognised in domestic law as part of Scotland. And the Scottish Government clearly therefore does have a duty and obligation to regulate the use of the territorial waters around it. The actions of the Scottish Government in showing our determination to protect the rights and interests of Scottish fishermen, as well as uh, willingness to engage in discussions, have demonstrated, I think, that we take the protection of our fishing interests seriously. So would the Cabinet Secretary confirm that this dispute does not, in her view, impact on our constructive relations with Ireland? And will she or the Rural Affairs Secretary report back to Parliament on the outcome of the discussions currently underway? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, it is our duty to protect the interests of the Scottish fishing industry and our territorial seas, and we have uh, an obligation to uphold the law in exercising our rights under international law, just as other countries do. Uh, Scotland has a strong and enduring relationship with our nearest neighbours, Ireland, which we value greatly, uh, one demonstrated by our regular ministerial conversations and our political, economic and social connections. We hope that strong relationship will help lead to a constructive resolution. Uh, Parliament will be updated as and when there are further developments. And Andy Whiteman. I thank you, Presiding Officer, to declare an interest as an Irish citizen. The Minister will be aware that Rockall was annexed by the British Crown on the advice of the Colonial Office when, in September 1955, Lieutenant Commander Scott landed in the Rock, raised the Union flag and announced in the name of Her Majesty, I hereby take possession of this island of Rockall. Does the Minister agree with me that we should reject complicity in Britain's last act of colonialism, make it clear we'll have nothing to do with such land grabs and instead renounce any Scottish claims over Rockall? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, clearly, the sovereignty issue by the UK government is one thing. Management of fisheries and sustainable fisheries, I would have thought, would be something that the, the member would be uh, uh, interested in. Our obligations and our responsibilities are clear in relation to the responsibilities of this parliament in relation to fisheries management and sustainable fisheries management and recognition of the importance of the fisheries industry to Scotland's economic interests is something that we in the Scottish Government will continue to promote. But as I said, I value very much our relationships. We want to strike a new relationship with Ireland as we progress. And, in, and of course, there may be difficulties along the way, but the way to resolve these are in diplomatic discussions, which we have had and will continue to have with the Irish government. 